Okay, so just a couple more examples, finding the magnitude and direction of a vector. Maybe we can squeeze these both in here. So let's find the magnitude and direction angle of the vector with components 2, comma, 6. So again, all that means if we imagine situating it at the origin, you've moved 2 units to the right and 6 units up. So again, the magnitude, uh, to get the magnitude, if we call this vector V, the magnitude, it says, well, to get that, we just take each component, square it, add those together, and square root it. So we're going to get 36 plus 4, which is going to be the square root of 40. We can always write uh, the square root of 40 as the square root of 4 times 10. And if we simplify that, that's going to give us 2 times the square root of 10 as our magnitude. To find the direction angle, again, I'm just going to think about a right triangle here. So I'm just going to make a little right triangle. This will be our angle theta. So the adjacent side has length 2 and the opposite side has length 6. So that simply says that tangent of theta would equal opposite over adjacent. So tangent of theta is going to equal 3. And now all we have to do is take the inverse tangent of both sides. So inverse tangent of 3, uh, plug this in the good old calculator. So inverse tangent of 3, I'm getting that to be equal to 71.57 degrees after rounding. So in this case, um, again, since our, our vector here is in quadrant 1, uh, we found this angle. We don't have to do you know, any of this business like in the other examples of adding 180 or taking 180 and subtracting this. So now we've already got the direction angle for our vector. Um, let's do one other one here. Let's do the last one real quick. Um, so we've got the, uh, we want to find the magnitude and direction angle of the vector with components 3 comma negative 10. Well, again, you don't have to sketch it, but um, I like to do this, or at least I think about this in my head, just so I can kind of think about what, what quadrant the vector is going to be pointing at. And that's going to help me think about the direction angle. So here's my slightly crooked vector. Um, they're supposed to be straight lines, obviously. Um, I am not the greatest artist. So there's our vector with components 3, uh, comma, negative 10. So it says we move 3 units to the right and 10 units down. So again, to find the magnitude, to find the magnitude of our vector, we'll just take each component, so 3 squared, we'll take each component, square it, add them together, square root it. So we'll get 9 plus 100, uh, so 9 plus 100, which is going to be the square root of 109. I do believe 109 is prime, uh, is that correct? So let's see. Um, does 3 go into it? I don't think so. Uh, 3 would go into 90, but then you'd need another 90. Uh, 5's not. 7, does 7 work? Um, let's see, 7 would go into 70. We'd need another 39, so it's not 7. Um, 9 doesn't work. Um, and then, uh, generally, once you get past the square root, um, well, we could always check a few more. Um, 11, does 13 work? 13's not going to work, so I'm almost positive uh, 109 is prime, so you all can check that. Um, so I would say the magnitude is simply the square root of 109. Again, you can put it into a decimal if you want to. And again, to figure out the, uh, the angle, I'm going to make a little right triangle here. Um, so let's see here. Um, let's call this our angle theta. So it says the, uh, the opposite side here. Um, so if we find the opposite side from our triangle, that's going to be 3. The adjacent side, again, if we think about lengths, that would be positive 10. So we'll simply do tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent, so 3 over 10, which would tell us that theta is just going to equal arctangent of 3 over 10. All right, so let's see here. Let's do that. So 3 divided by 10, that's going to give us, well, 0.3. Um, when we take arctangent of that, 
I'm getting that angle to be roughly equal to 16.70 degrees after rounding off. So really what we found is, again, we found this angle. So we found that this angle is 16.70 degrees. And again, now the way I think about it is, well, um, if you if we had went all the way around to the uh, sort of the negative y-axis, that's an angle of 270 degrees. Well, then we would have to go an additional 16.70 degrees. So to figure out this direction angle, the direction angle would just be 270 degrees plus this little bit extra 16.70 degrees. So to me it looks like we would say that uh, after adding up the direction angle is just simply going to be uh, 286.70 degrees.